Hello, my name is Mike Gabe, and welcome to another Sandbox Saturday. This is the series in which I leave my normal career mode game and play around in the sandbox with some sort of objective that hopefully I will achieve. And if you didn't catch last week's Sandbox Saturday, I would recommend that you watch that before watching this one because this one is going to pick up right where that previous one left off. But just to qu recap really quickly, last episode what I was doing is I was building a hover script, the product of which you're seeing in action right now. So if I put the craft into hover mode, the thrust will exactly balance off the force of gravity on the craft. I also am able to increase the thrust in small increments and decrease the thrust in small increments and kill the throttle should I desire to do that and that makes it much easier for me to control crafts like the one that you see here. The problem with this particular set of code though is that I have to put my thrust adjustment inputs into the terminal window that you see up there at the top left of your screen. So what that means is every time I want to adjust the thrust I have to click on that terminal window but every time I want to adjust the attitude of the craft I have to click off of that terminal window and that's very, very awkward. So what I want to do in this episode is make those inputs be handled by action groups rather than through the terminal window. And then that will make this much, much more, uh, I think, intuitive in order to control. That requires looking at a KOS structure called a trigger. Well instead of talking about triggers, why don't I show you? So let's get into this right away. Let's start off with taking a quick look at the code that was left over from last episode. So two things that I want to draw attention to because these are the two things that are going to need to be changed. One is this until loop. At the top here we see until I press the delete button, that's that terminal input delete right, um, that's the delete button on your keyboard. Until that is pressed, we're going to remain in the loop, which is all the code that is below that particular line. And when the delete button is pressed, we will exit the loop and the, and the uh, program will end. And now inside the loop, what I want to draw attention to are the if statements. So for instance, if I take a look at the first one, it says if ch, which represents a character that has just been inputted into the terminal window, if ch is equal to cursor up one, that is the up cursor on the keyboard, then what we're going to do is we're going to go to our thrust adjustment and we're going to add on an increment and that increment is a 5% increment. The, it just means that the thrust will go up by 5% every time I press the up cursor on or the up arrow on the keyboard and you can look down the rest of those F's and you can see kind of what they do once you've understood that. So things I got to change. Number one is I need to remove the loop. So once I got into action groups, I need to remove the loop. So I simply commented it out for now so that, you know, it makes it easy for me to go back if something goes wrong. The second thing is the if statement has been changed to an on. Now, how does an on work? Well, an on is in KOS called a trigger. And what a trigger does is once it's called, as long as the program is running, it is constantly looking for this to happen. It does not need to be in a loop. As long as the program is running, this on is active as soon as, it, as soon as the program runs into these lines. And what it's looking for is a change in a particular action group. In this particular one, you can see it says on AG6, that's action group six, that's pressing the six on your keyboard. When AG6 is toggled, so what that means is there's going to be a change in AG6. AG6 is either on or it's off. It just toggles between on and off or really true and false. And every time there is a change, that on is going to fire. And when that on fires, it's going to again just increase the thrust by 5%. That line is exactly the same. Below that line though, I need to have a statement that says return true. That's a new statement. What this does is, if that statement wasn't there, once an on fires or once a trigger fires, and there's other kinds of triggers by the way, but right now we'll continue to talk about the on. When a trigger fires, that trigger is done. 
And that's the default sort of behavior of it because quite often what you have with triggers is, you know, when I'm 500 meters above the ground, I want to do this. And then you're never going to be 500 meters above the ground anymore, so the trigger has done its job and it's, it's over with. This case though, I do want this trigger to remain active because I keep wanting to press, I want to keep pressing that six button if I want to increase my thrust in the future. So to tell it, no, I want this trigger to remain active, I simply add the line return true. So that's how a trigger works. And you can see as you go down the rest of this, we have on uh, AG5 and then AG9 and AG0, and they perform the same tasks as they did before. Again, though, with these return trues. There are, though, still a couple of things wrong here. And in, in the uh, interest of showing you the true process of debugging that none of us write our code perfectly right off the bat, well, I'm going to let you see my own discovery <laughs> of the things that are not quite right here. I think it's all these locks are getting confusing, because here I have lock throttle to thrust setting, but here I have lock thrust setting to thrust setting times. I think this part here is confusing, especially now that we're out of that loop. What I think I shall do is simply add this times thrust part. This makes way more sense. This will be cleaner to here. And then this lock command comes out entirely. That makes much more sense. So now the throttle is locked to this calculation. And then every time I set the thrust to something different, that percolates up here and will adjust the throttle. I think the multiple lock settings were what was confusing all of this. One hover AG. Okay, nothing, but let's see if we can. So we'll click off the terminal window and hit six. That should increase the throttle. Nope. Six. Six, six. Same thing if I have it on. Oh. Alright, six just did that. Uh. Okay, I think I might be onto something. Uh, delete again. Oh no, that's not working. Interesting. We'll see. I think. Oh, didn't took all those are all my inputs there. Um, I have me a feeling that what is really messing it up is is waiting for input to the terminal. I don't think I can mix the two together. So where do I hear this line here? It's waiting for input from the terminal. So we're going to comment that out. I think it's getting hung up on that line. I really, really do. Alright. Save. Run. Hover. AG. Dot. There. Ah, ah, now I've got passed. So now if I hit 9. Yeah, it's throttling up take a little bit I gotta get ready here now uh, let's actually increase thrust I think that's a six I noticed thrust adjustment stuck at zero it's clearly not a zero so that's interesting Oh, it's, of course, every time I hit AG6, it's going to... Oh, 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 oh. Okay. The, the adjustments on thrust are working, but the... That's, that's kind of good, actually. So the action groups are working, but I'm not getting this printed out here. So I'll have to look to see why, that, why that's happening. But at least now it's working. So it was... You're mixing up the trying to take it from whoa, come back. Alright, alright, let's let's revert. Cause I think we're we're very, very, very close. It was getting hung up on this line waiting for input to the terminal. So we're gonna take that out. And actually while we're at this, because I've lost pretty much 
I'm not going to use this variable at all. That can go to there. Let's put a space. I'm just cleaning up code now. <laughs> I hope people don't mind. Well, I'll be uh, editing this so you don't have to watch all this. I like this because this is a lot more clean without that loop in there. And this is not going to work. So I need to have uh, wait until what's going to be my abort. AG. <laughs> Mixing up uh, terminal input with that is not a good idea. So I have 5 and 6 for up and down, 9 and 0 for killing the throttle. Um, I want to keep my hands far away. Let's go 1 and just don't use any other. Action group 1 is going to kill the program. Should definitely print some information to that effect because I will forget <laughs> running this in the future. Uh, but what's happening here? Well, first of all, these things here really kind of belong just from a logic standpoint. Let's put those up there. That makes way more sense to have those at the front. Uh, I still, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty cool with that. Now, so it's printing and the thrust adjust is zero, and that's true at the beginning. But what's interesting to me is why this thrust adjust is always going to be zero. Like it just never gets away from being zero. So when I press, for instance, the uh, nine, it should set thrust adjust to one. Oh, but this isn't in any kind of a loop. That's why. Ooh, ooh I gotta look into how to do that. That's why. This is just going through printing that. It's not in any sort of loop. So maybe I do, but maybe I just need this. Okay, let's bring this back to the bottom again. Keep the clear screen up there. Oh no, you do need to clear the screen all the time. So let's bring this back to the bottom. And let's make a loop down here for this. I think this will work. So if I put... This waiting tenth of a second doesn't do anything now. I'm just thinking about that. There we go. Or a hundredth of a second it was. But I might put that into here. I think having it pause each time through the loop I don't think is a bad thing. But here what we're going to do is write until AG1. This is going to go. We're going to be in this loop. And I'm hoping this will fix the output issue that I've been having. So all of these triggers should be active. It should go through here and then it should get stuck in the loop. I believe these triggers will still be active in there. But now this will keep getting updated. So let's save that. Okay, and we are going to press 9. Yes, so that's that. It didn't print though. Oh, because I don't have it here. <laughs> okay, so I'll have to put the outputs, you know, hover. But at least this is working. Thrust adjustment is a 1. That's correct. And let's put a 6 on there too to uh, increase the thrust adjustment a little bit. It takes a bit for the engines to spool up. Let's do this again. But what's nice now is I can control attitude while at the same time controlling thrust. 5 puts that down. Uh, put it back to 9. That puts us into hover mode. Let's see if we can go this way. Let's go a six because I don't want to lose altitude. 
There we go. Oh, yeah, baby. Let's see if we can do this now. Now, a better craft would certainly work, too, especially the reaction wheels. I have <laughs> the only reaction wheels are what's in the probe. And that's really kind of a dumb plan. Okay, five. Five again. Let's go a little bit. Does it seem to be... Okay, nine. Look at that. It's so much nicer not having to click on the terminal window all the time. Six. Six again. We're losing altitude because every time I adjust... Six again. Come on. There we go. Now we're starting to climb. I just gotta make sure not to hit the buildings. <laughs> Okay, a five, a uh, nine. Okay, let's see if we can get. Just see if I can get a nice hover happening just above. Whoa. When you start to see the prograde on the nav ball, that really helps. Starting to learn that one. And you can pull that prograde towards where you want to go. Five. Start to descend. Same with the retrograde. Now we're descending. I can see that. Nine. Six. Six again. Come on. Throttle up. Coming down pretty fast, but we'll see how this goes. Zero. <laughs> oh, you know what? <laughs> hey, why don't I not have control of Jeb? Oh, because I'm on the vehicle. There we go. Hello, Jeb. <laughs> I'm actually okay we broke one of our jet engines I can see that this craft stinks I can see that as well and it doesn't take away everything that can go wrong it's not effortless by any stretch of the imagination but I'm not gonna spend all that time all this time I think I ain't gonna call that I'm gonna call we're on top of the uh, helipad on the V and the VAB with well a little bit of damage but I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna call that one a win. I think this this program is working actually pretty pretty good. Uh, let's end it now. Ending it should be a one. <laughs> oh wait, I gotta be on the vehicle. End. There, see the program's ended. So I, I'm I'm I don't know. I'm gonna call that one a win. Let's bring up um our edit uh just hover we'll change this so this is the program from last episode the one that i reviewed very briefly at the very beginning of this episode and what i want to do is i want to modify it and i want to use the other kos trigger besides the on there's another one that we're going to be introducing into here I need to get, yeah, all of these locks were ridiculous, so I do need to fix all this. That was uh, something that was definitely holding me up before. And we're also going to get rid of the great big loop that's here. Instead, have a loop at the end. This until delete right is going to go away. This line's gone because it does no longer necessary. I think this now needs to be down with this. We need to create a loop once again down here. Do this to in for input. 
but now all of this stuff set thrust to avail yeah the, this line here really belongs up here with the rest of this stuff but now we're going to change these to when this condition then do this the when is the other KOS trigger so very much like the on but what's different about it is while the on is looking for a change in the action group state from either true to false or false to true the when takes a condition like for instance is the character you just push the up cursor then that is what triggers it so it's looking for that condition to be true also notice the use of the word then in there we'll do a lot of cleaning up as far as whoops make this look better we'll also put some output to the user let's do what the controls are <laughs> say user I mean me because sometimes you know I'll end up getting to the point where I have to there this is the line that's been this part, yep. And this business here needs to be all in some sort of loop. So until we push, uh, what was the ending command again that I had? I think I used delete. ch equals uh, terminal, terminal, terminal input delete right and then that's in a loop That is now our input loop. Let's just get this wait command. It actually makes no difference where that wait command really is in the loop, but I don't know. To me, this looks same with the clear screen. Like, it just bugs me that it's... No, actually, it's good the way it is. So there, that, I think, now fixes up the uh, other... The version that works with uh, terminal input rather than action group. So let's revert our flight and we're going to try our next hover here. Let's see how this goes. So I uh, don't need to say this, just going to run it. Run. Oh, hover. There and there. Okay. Uh, and. Go. Oh, what do we get here? Let's see if we can get a better read on this. Run. Cover. Okay, what's up? Unidentified thrust adjust. Oh, this looks like a typo. I think, yeah. Right. Where is this? Unidentified thrust adjust. Lock throttle to thrust adjust. I never thrust adjust is right here. Did I? Oh, thrust. That's a typo. Okay, Let's fix that. Save. It's all part of the game, isn't it? Run. Hover. Okay, we're here. So now this should be responding to the old. Uh, let's see here. So I'm forgetting my controls. Um, home, right? Is yes. So home should be. Oh, but it did not do that. Oh wait, yes it is. But it's. Oh, I got the same thing with. Interesting. Oh, I got a delay happening with this. Okay, okay. Let's. This is coming after. 
Like there's a delay. Let's let's think about this. Oh, we are getting character input here. It just might be where this is. That makes sense. Might need to put that after this. Let's see what that does. Okay, and then cover. And home. Yes, now it's working right. And throttle up. Yep, 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 yep. Throttle down. Ooh, throttle downs. Throttle downs not working. Throttle up. Oh, I'm in hover. Kill engines. That works. Throttle up. Ooh, that's interesting. Why is that suddenly not working? It was working a moment ago. Oh, I know why. Okay, yep, 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 yep. Uh, let's uh, delete. Didn't put in the return trues. To keep these active. Return true. Copy that. Turn true. Turn true. Turn true. Also, what I want to do, let's clear the screen. Let's put a message in here just for the user to controls, like to give some sort of. So, uh, yeah, uh, controls. We'll keep that uppercase. Delete is um, end program. blank line in there. There. Alright, let's save all this. Let's run hover again. Run hover. Oh, what do we got here? Doesn't like some stuff. Text description you see from this error at uh, uh, line 47. Unexpected P token found at end of line. Oh, something stupid right here. Probably forgot a period, like right there. Okay, let's save this again. Run. Hover. Here we go. So now we got some controls. Um, do I need to print? These print blank lines, I think they need to have, oh, I should really, in the program, save it again. These aren't printing blank lines, so I think I need to actually put in blank lines. So, uh, let's see, run, hover, much better. So, controls, we got home for hover mode, N for killing throttle, up cursor, down cursor, increasing, decreasing, and the program, this and this. So, we shall go into hover mode with the home. That's working. Nice. We can increase throttle. And oh, whoa, 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 whoa. That's out of control. Oh my gosh. Let's go back to that. Kill throttle. But this. <laughs> oh. What the heck happened there? Um, alrighty. <laughs> um, let's obviously try and figure out that throttle calculation was out of control. But that should be easy to fix, I would think. I thought I had it. Oh, I see. I think I see what the problem is. Yeah, yeah, that's got it. So I went ahead and I made the changes, and this is now 
for now, at least, my final script. I did I put a couple of other things in there. The issue was with with that is right here. Let's take a look at, for instance, just the first one. Um, before I I just had to put in this line to set the character back to uh, an empty string, and uh, it's pretty obvious what's happening here is down here we are. Let's get down to the bottom. Down here at this line right where's the line where we read in there it is <laughs> where we set ch to whatever the input character is so for instance i hit the up arrow it sets ch to the up arrow and then of course that's going to trigger this particular event here and uh you're in here but the character is still an up arrow so because ch is still an up arrow it's just whipping through this and just continually increasing the thrust. So once I put in this simple line here to once you're into this little block of code to set the character back to an empty string, then this empties just fine. But now if I hit home, it's now set the thrust address to one. It's starting to throttle up. I'm gonna put a bit of an up arrow and then I have to click off. So we're a little bit more than hover and I just gotta get ready it takes a while for the throttle to spool, uh, for the engines to spool up because they're jet engines. You might also notice while this is happening that uh, the throttle is now higher than it was before, and that's because I have nerfed these engines. That was one of the things that was making this difficult to fly. Well, one of the many things that was making this thing difficult to fly. Whoa, here we go. We're, we're taking off. Um, go to here, hit a down arrow. One of the many things making this thing difficult to fly is that these engines were too powerful, so there wasn't enough control on them. Now, this is obviously the more challenging one. I'm going to give a couple of ups here. Whoa. I'm noticing that we're going back down again. <laughs> there we go. Okay, now we come back. No, I'm going to start. You have to keep clicking off there. There we go. Whoa, that's all tilting too much. The engines do not spool up fast enough for uh, here, down. See, and you can see this thing is working, and it's far easier to control. But let's revert back, because really it's the other um, script I think that's a better one. And run hover with action groups, AG, there we go. So all I did, I put in a similar thing, but of course changed what the controls are. A, a Action group nine is hover mode, action group 10 is kill the throttle, action group six is increase the throttle, action group five, decrease the throttle, action group one to end the program. So we'll get in here behind Jebediah. Oh, and now I don't need to be on the terminal, so action group nine with a six. Just give us a little bit of ups and doodlies. And again, notice how the throttle is higher than it was before because I've nerfed down these engines. That should make this easier to fly. So I'm going to take one last shot at putting this on the helipad. Let's see how this goes. Oh, well, I think we're getting close. Yep, we are starting to go up. Straight there. Uh, oh, that was. There we are, increasing the throttle. And again, the jet engines are slow to react. So when you. When you adjust your attitude, they are very slow to react to increase the thrust. So you really can't count on that. Back down the hover mode. Anything actually decreased throttle just a little bit more. Let's get over there. Whoa, and more powerful action groups or more powerful reaction wheels would definitely be a good plan. We got the attitude going out a little bit higher. Now where this would be going next, the next logical step, would be that you could put in an altitude as the user and it would go to that altitude and hover at that altitude. And that would require some uh, what are called PID controllers, proportional, integral, and differential controllers. Uh, for this video, that's a bit of a bridge too far. <laughs> 
But I think that's the next step, and you can turn this into, and then the next step after that would be some sort of actual landing script. But we'll see how this goes. I think it's clearly better controlled than it was. <laughs> I think we can all safely agree on that one. Okay, back to hover. So a little bit of thrust because I'm coming down pretty hard. Again, those engines are slow to react. I'm coming down a little harder than I would like. Oh no, no, Jed, that was so close! <laughs> oh, that was so close. <laughs> Can we leave this seat here, Jeb? Oh, Jebediah. We were almost there. Clearly more practice on my part. It is not idiot proof, clearly by any stretch because of what this idiot just did. But you know what? I think that is a proof that the thing is working as well as I can expect it to be working. So with that, I'm going to be ending this video. I'm going to thank you for watching and hope to see you again next time.